how bad the lay is. I know I'm coming home to you. Was it a bad one? No, not now, darling. It's all worth it. I wish I could do something to help. Something that would bring in some money. You work so hard for it. I'll find something that pays more. Don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. It's just that no one should have to work as hard as you do. It's not work providing for my beautiful women. Oh. But that man deserves a kiss for that, or <laughs> what? I think that man deserves. Should we go give your boss the kiss? Should we go give your boss the kiss, huh? Should we? Should we, Should we give your boss the kiss? Should we? Should we the neighborhood, Mrs. Markham. Like I said, my husband and I pretty much stick to ourselves. That's not what we hear. What? I've seen you dozens of times at the supermarket in places. I'm sorry, and Miss. And I... I'm sure that you've seen my sisters. One of them is a police officer, you remember? Where'd you get my name again? From Mrs. Lyon. The lady with the cats. She called and told us about you. What about me? Cheryl's father was walking his dog on a night when people think he was someplace else. And we need to find someone who saw him. We need a witness who'll testify that Vincent's alibi is the truth. But, but I, I can't testify to anything. I, I don't know anything. I'm not buying that at all, Mrs. Markham. A man with a dog. I... Vince McKinnon, he wears a dark blue parka and a cap. I don't know him for the last time. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the story, Mrs. Markham. We understand that a friend of yours... A man comes by your house every night about the same time. Uh, my, my brother. What? <laughs> uh, we, we have a sick mother. My brother drops by after he visits her at the hospital. Ah, uh, that's not what we were told. This is definitely not your brother, Mrs. Markham. You're wrong. I, I, I have a husband. We've been married for years. Happily married. I'm a devoted wife. I'd no more think of taking a lover. I had Tootsie, how's my lover? Now, the next part of Another World. Hiya, kids. <laughs> Yeah, you never told me you had kids. Uh, we're not. We were waiting for you. Oh, uh, why? Uh, they've been asking all kinds of questions. They forced their way in here. Questions? What sort of questions? Personal ones. Why don't we all sit down, huh? Who are you? I'm Scott LaSalle. This is Cheryl McKinnon. Did, uh, did my wife put you up to this? Why? Is she paying you to sneak around and spy on me? You didn't tell me you had a wife. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of her, all right? Look, you're... Love life doesn't interest us. What we need are eyewitnesses. Somebody gave Vince McKinnon a ride to the bus stop that night. I think it might have been you. All right, if you don't get out of here, I'll throw you out. Let's cut the macho stuff, okay? Now, you guys give us a sworn statement that you'll testify for Vince McKinnon, and we'll be quiet about the two of you. I'm warning you. If we testify, everybody will know about us. We're not stupid, we you know. We can have it arranged so they'll know anyways. Oh, please, no. That's it, you're out of here. Please, let's just leave her alone so they can think about it. I'm not giving her a divorce. She thinks she's going to bleed me out all my money. She's crazy. Go ahead, tell her. We'll come back. Get up. Let's go. Please. Okay, but we'll be back. You can count on it. Mary, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you, Bridget. Mr. Love, look who's here. Look. Mary, I'm so glad to see you. Hello. Oh, well, I'll leave the two of you alone now, eh? Are you all right? Now that you're here, I am. You look pale. Peter's been worried about you. 
How do you know that? He called to tell me about Gomez. <sighs> My poor Donna. It's really dreadful. Just when I was getting to know her, hoping you'd get to know her too. But perhaps you will one day. I'm not giving up hope. And seeing you makes me even more hopeful. I have to get back to work. But you just got here. Surely you intended to stay for a little while, at least. Well, a few more minutes. I haven't been outside in days. What's the weather like? Oh, it's beautiful. It's, um, brisk. Then how about a drive to the lake? Perhaps the fresh air would make me strong. No, I, I can't. I, I have to, uh, get back. But just down to the lake, at the end of the property, it's such a beautiful spot. I, I um... It's cold. I'm not dressed for it. Well, we can fix that. Bridget? Bridget, come here, please. Reginald, I really, I have to go yeah. back. Mary? Uh, Bridget, would you fetch one of Mrs. Love's fur coats from the closet, please? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, which one would you prefer? It doesn't matter. I can't... You choose, Bridget. Oh, yes, sir. Of course. Thank you. Oh, Mary, you must have been so cold in that cloth coat. You must take a fur coat with you. I, 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 I have to go back. Ada needs me. I need you more. Here we are, sir. I hope you like this one. It's always been my favorite. Thank you. Here we go. Please, Mary. Stay with me for a little while. Right. For half an hour, no more. I'll go get dressed and be down in a jiffy. You're a tonic, Mary. You arrive and all is well with the world. Do you want the heat on? No. No, I like the feeling of the cold air outside and feeling cozy inside my coat. Wait a minute. What? Wasn't that the coat you took for the winter that we rented the castle? Oh, on the island? Yes. Yeah. The Outer Hebrides. The one that's so easy to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we spent that whole winter talking like this. Oh, it was so freezing. Three fireplaces to heat an entire castle. Uh, one wasn't working. <laughs> we spent all our time trying to get warm. That's all we even thought about. Well, yeah, except for... What? What were you going to say? I was going to say, except for the night. Ah, oh, yes, the night. Under all those cashmere blankets in that goose-down-filled bed. Who needed a fire? I often think of that castle and that bed. No phones, no telegraphs, no connection with the outside world except the weekly packet boat from the mainland. I'd never been happier. I love you, Mary. I love you so much. Hi, Ada. Hi. Oh, my God, I thought I gave you the day off. You did. What are you doing here? You're supposed to run down that lead on a witness for Vince. The woman and her lover. Another blind alley? Mm-hmm, not this one. All right, there's a dead end. Complete zero. <sighs> Vince can't get a break. It's like the deck is stacked against him. Uh, we're not going to give up, though, Anna. Nobody's given up. Vince is innocent. All he has to do is hang in there until we can prove it. <sighs> Don't you do that? What? Stop me from telling Ada about Mrs. Martin. Cheryl, look, we are working on a case here. The fewer people find out what we turn up, the better off we're going to be. Why? Because people start talking, the word spreads. Potential witness gets wind of it, takes off, there goes our chance to clear Vince. You're probably right. Listen, what we have to concentrate on now is shaking up Mrs. Markham and her friend. They spotted Pops, I know it. Oh, they saw him, all right. And when the police find out about this, they'll prove that Reginald Love set up the whole thing. No, it won't, Cheryl. Sure, it's good. Look, I... I thought we were going after the truth here, What wasn't it? That is the truth. 
No, it's not. Then what is? I don't know yet. You're just protecting your father. No, I'm not. All I'm trying to do is get at the facts. We'll get, let the police and the district attorney determine what happened there. What if they find out that Reginald Love did set up the whole I'm thing? I'm not going to talk about this anymore. And you'll probably quit. Would you just back off and give me a break here, Cheryl? Now, look, I told you I was going to follow this thing through to the end, right? But then you start off and you try to nail somebody when you don't have any okay, other facts or okay, anything. Okay, okay, we'll try to get to the facts and the truth. Great. All we're doing is wasting time arguing here. What we have to do is think about how we're going to approach Mrs. Markham and her lover. Any ideas? Sure, we could, we could threaten to tell her husband and the guy's wife. It's blackmail. That's right, it is. No, Scott, we can't do that. That's wrong. Cops would hate it. I don't know how else we're going to get to him. All right, let's just think, okay? There's money. Money? Yeah, didn't the guy say something about how his wife was going to believe him dry in a divorce? Yeah. Well, so money's a big issue here, right? And if he had plenty of it, then right. he wouldn't have to worry about his wife. So all we have to do is offer him some money. Sort of like a reward for coming out and giving a testimony. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, the last time I looked, I think we were both broke, huh? Could always borrow some. Where? Michael Hudson said he wanted to help with the investigation. Sure, all he wants is revenge for what he claims my dad did Look, to him. Look, Scott, I don't care what he wants. He said he wanted to help us. He's got plenty of money. So you're going to ask him or am I? Okay. I guess the truth is coming in second here. With you or without you, I'm going to find a way to clean my pops. Such a wonderful morning. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no. What? It's not morning anymore. No. I can't believe how late it is. I have to get back. No, no, no. Not yet, please. Reginald, I have a job. Just a few more minutes, please, <sighs> Mary. What? <sighs> what is it? Just a little chill. Nothing. Are you all right? Yes. I'm fine. Oh, I don't want you to get sick. Come here. 